Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are actress Margaret Ladd and restaurant owner Elaine Cohen. Award-winning actress Margaret Ladd has enjoyed a career in television, film, and the Broadway stage. She studied at the Actors Studio, where she was the youngest person to be honored with a lifetime membership. Her love of theater has led her to develop, with her husband, writer Lyle Kessler, Imagination Workshop. Let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the theater and uh, how you got started, and then we'll get into imagination. Okay, well, that's good because that was the order of it. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> First, um, well, I, I, I went to Bard College, uh, which is a wonderful college because it specializes in, well, it, it's famous for the arts. And now their theater department has a uh, building by architect Frank Gehry. I know, it's magnificent. I went You've up been there. there. Have it's you absolutely seen it? <laughs> gorgeous. And it really was a wonderful and exciting environment. And uh, I really developed a love of theater, uh, both from the like classical perspective uh, mm. and also the method acting. And, and then and I went to Williamstown during the summer as uh, an apprentice. And uh, I did, oh. uh, so there I did uh, Long Day's Journey into Night. Oh, you did that with Olympia Dukakis. Yes. Oh, Boy, you are well educated. Was that <laughs> when you were still at Bard? That was when I was at Bard. Oh, I was wow. in, my, in, a, in, in my junior oh, year. Oh. And then actually. Uh, but you were just starting. I was and just starting. And she was an established actress. That was cool for yeah, you. I know it was great. I I got to play several of the uh, several of the uh, roles were given to apprentices, and I got Cordelia and and the maid in oh. Long Day's Journey, which is actually a wonderful role. I know you love the classics too. Yes. And <laughs> And, and so they asked me then, they were taking it to the Princeton's MacArthur Theater, MacArthur Theater. Uh -huh. the, yeah. And uh, so, but I hadn't finished my education and I was in, I was, I had one year to go. So the president of Bard, this wonderful man said, well, all right, well, I went to Princeton. I'm going to call them up and ask if you could finish your senior year at Princeton. You're kidding. Is <laughs> Not that, that I really there? took their classes, but they let me go to the, the library and do all my papers. And so they somehow arranged with Bard that I could oh, study there. Great. And so I, that was my, when I got my equity card. What you know, a wonderful was, school to do something like that and yes. to be so interested so in wonderful, each student. So wonderful, yes. Um, you were directed by Mike Nichols in The Knack. Yes. W where was that? That was at, at, uh, off Broadway uh -huh. um, at the New Theater. And then you went on Broadway, The Great Indoors. Yes, and with, what with was Geraldine, that? Geraldine Page. Page. Yeah. And, um, and oh, that was a wonderful experience, just working with her. I, I would stare at her all the time because she was so magnificent. But isn't that a way that actors learn from other professionals? Absolutely. You know, absolutely. In a way, actors really don't learn acting. They, they sort of, it, it's passed down through the generations. That's what I hear, that you have to just be on the set all the time, thinking and, and being there and watching the way they move. Absolutely, you know, and just you just you learn all kinds of things. Like I was afraid because I didn't know how to cry, and I knew she was this famous <laughs> method actress. So I, um, I had this scene where I was very happy, and then the next minute I had to come out sobbing. So I thought, Oh my God, what am I going to do? How did do? you do it? Well, I I, I really thought I'll never do it. So I'm behind the couch for one second. So I spit on my finger and put it under my eye. Did it work? <laughs> <laughs> and then the pressure was relieved and I <laughs> burst into tears. Oh, it did work. <laughs> and then in Gene Brody with Zoe Caldwell? Yes. And that was also? That was, that was on Broadway. On Broadway. And that was, that was wonderful. She, she, every, uh, she was so wonderful. Every um, uh, intermission, 
she would work on Shakespeare with me. Oh, really? And uh, she she did she that was wonderful, so wonderful play about um, uh, the opera singer. Onassis is involved. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, she yes, did that uh, one, one woman. Yeah. yeah. And then you've worked with really excellent directors in film. I mean, you've yes. been on stage a lot, but you've also done film. You've worked with Altman and Peter Yates and Coppola and right. uh, Lindsay Anderson. Tell us the Lindsay Anderson story. I think that's good. Well, uh, I worked on uh, The Whales of August, and I just had a little part. Uh, <laughs> Mary Steenburgen and I shot it, at, had little parts. What we did was we played, uh, Betty, Betty Davis and Lillian Gish were in it. And <laughs> they really were, so you were they really were. in the so film I, with them? I, and we got to know them, it was wonderful. We were on an island in Maine, it was a fabulous experience, and he was a great, great man. And uh, we, I played Betty Davis when she was younger, her character, that is. Was she, how, how did she act towards you? She was wonderful towards me, but she was very rude to oh, other she? people. Her, 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 she had this man walking around, a young man who would, uh, she would go like this, and he would light her cigarette, and then she would uh, push his hand away after he lit it, and she was very angry. She had, she, she'd gone, she's had, she had a hard life. But very she, diva, though, wasn't she? She was magnificent. I mean, <laughs> I don't really care. That she, was, she was crabby, but she was lovely and a real artist. And what did you do with Robert Altman? I did um, the uh, uh, the wedding, a wedding. Oh, that was great. And uh, it was great working with him. And they're all different, right, in their methods of directing? Oh, yeah. Uh, Robert Altman I learned the most from. I, in fact, he, w he became on the board of this Imagination Workshop because oh, his process was similar to, to it. it it's, he was like an impressionist, and you put you put little fragments of memory together and and create something wonderful from it. And uh, that's the, the other way he thing, um, so we've covered theater and we've covered TV and film. Uh, no, we've covered film. We haven't covered TV, oh, but TV. nine years I as know. Jane Wyman's daughter. You were Betty Davis's daughter, then Jane Wyman's daughter. I know. I always played with the wonderful, younger. wonderful. I've been so lucky, you know, uh, that I played with some of the great actresses uh, and great directors I've had. And what, what was that role in Falcon Crest? Well, you know, I'd had experience with the Imagination Workshop, which I think helped me great. The Imagination Workshop, as, as people probably don't know, is, is a group of... Uh, is now it's having its 40th year. Oh, it is? Oh, I thought I you were one of the founders. I was, but oh, I, you I, was, I, was, I wasn't born yet, but I was <laughs> That's founded. What I mean. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> but uh, I think I was one. Okay. So, but um, now uh, it... it uh, Playing somebody's daughter. Yeah. Well, but the saying? Imagination Workshop is a way of, of teaching people to act. But yes. they're in a different situation. Did you have? You tell us what it is, and then I'll ask you well, if you had a medical really background. Ha no, 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 no. We d didn't. In fact, it was insane of the doctors to let us do it, considering. But we all know they are insane anyway. But in any case, we just were. We just wanted to pass on the theater to them. We weren't t doing any kind of psychodrama or anything. But tell we us what group of people you were passing the theater on to because you to this, got people to act right. out, right? The seriously mentally ill. In fact, the way we discovered is I was in a play of Ionesco's at the Berkshire Theater Festival and uh, Ionesco was there and we were invited to see a play <coughs> done by the patients. Oh. And the pa patients were doing, uh, you know, were very withdrawn. We knew, we knew them because we were right next door to their place. And when they did this play, they absolutely came to life. They were funny. They were witty. They put on these little costumes. And somehow you'd think the, scare, the most frightened people in the world, you'd think they'd be even more frightened to get on stage. And yet they were less frightened. And I know that feeling. I feel less frightened on Is that stage right? behind so a character. And oh, behind a character. And, could, and they could understand that idea that they were behind a character. Well, it wasn't a question <coughs> of understanding. They just took to it. It was amazing. I, I mean, it was absolutely amazing how they did it, and it stayed in my mind. Well, I was wondering if you and your husband, who's a, a writer, yes. had... Uh, 
medical experience. No, in Not fact, at all? we we speak a different language from med, the med, and we work with the doctors. We're mm. we have a, run a program at UCLA, and we're at the vet. We work with the vets now, and with kids who have come out of, you know, who are troubled, and uh, and we've worked at Columbia and Cornell. And but tell, what do you teach them? What we do is we teach them the discipline of theater. Our feeling is that they have highly developed imaginations, but that it's turned inward in a form of delusion. Oh, so that's so, imagination. Part. But what we decided <clears throat> that is that they had the same intensity that we had. So what we did was we got them to turn it out in the form of doing characters far oh. removed from themselves, and they could do it just like that. But the other thing, you have actors participating in your workshops. How yes. do you choose them? Well, we just get the most... Uh, people, you know, a lot of people want to do it, and we've we've had some of the best actors. We had Sam Waterston was in it, and and uh, as actually Susan Sarandon, and well, lots of all, all wonderful actors. Do they just come for that weekend that you give it, or are you doing no, these no? We uh, all those the are the sort of guest artist people. That's the guest but, <laughs> but the but the real nitty gritty, like Jim Jim McGrath, who's our, who's the director, and uh, we we just choose actors and then we train them how to intervene so that we are dealing always with theater and always with the metaphor of theater rather than their own personal experience. Are, are they recognized, any of the actors? Do people recognize you, uh, the oh, students yeah. and the people oh, yeah. in the hospital? They, they, you know, we, we work together with the patients, but when That's you're in, the in the actual experience, I remember Ted Danson came once, and he couldn't tell who the doctors were in the group, who the patients were. And these were really <laughs> seriously ill patients. But somehow when they take on this character, they become, they become very normal. Well, I think it's such a wonderful thing that you've done because it is a way of getting people out of their own it is. trauma, so right, to speak. Right. And, and you've done so. It's such a great job. Even... 40 years, even when you started so young. You have twins. Yes. Are they in the business? They're, no, they're not. Well, <laughs> you know, they're, they're 26. They're, they're just sort of finding themselves. But they both are talented. They're both interested in it. Do they come to the workshop? They, we, they've grown up with the workshop. We've gone to the plays and, the, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and actually I think it's been good for them. I think it's been good for all of us because you realize how wonderful all these different people are that you never would have gotten the opportunity to meet. Thank you so much, Margaret. Oh, thank you for thank interviewing you. me. And don't go away. We'll be right back with Elaine Cohen, who has Got Kosher. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Chef, owner, founder of Got Kosher Cafe and Catering, Alain Cohen was born in Tunis, Tunisia, and raised in Paris, France. Alain went to UCLA Film School and learned the power of a gourmet sandwich from the La Brea bakery master, Nancy Silverton. Correct. But... Uh, the joy of cooking that you have started in Paris when you were a young boy. How did that? You were nine years old? I was nine years old when I started to be uh, the bus boy of the <laughs> restaurant of my father. Learned, my, uh, learned the ropes all, my, uh, all the way up to uh, waiter, to uh, bartender, to chef, to manager, to everything. And that was in Paris? And that was in Paris, and all of that before university. And his oh, all before university. Yeah, very And young. your father had his own recipes. Obviously, did he bring them from Tunisia? Absolutely. All the food we made there was the authentic, uh, homemade uh, Tunisian Jewish cooking. And uh, later on, when I uh, took over the restaurant myself and uh, created a new version of restaurant of the restaurant. I created the Franco-Tunisian cuisine. In Paris? In Paris. What area was it in? It was just next door to the Folie Bergère. You know the Folie oh, Bergère? Oh, it was. It was right yeah. in the center. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. very close in. Yeah, we, are, we had the basement, and the legend is there was a little hole somewhere just <laughs> <laughs> behind the, the green room of the stars. But oh, I never no. found yeah, the hole. Yeah, I never sure found you the hole. You never the found hole. like the poker peak room, right? <laughs> Did, uh, did, was your father's restaurant kosher? Absolutely. It was kosher. Yeah. So was that 
the norm in Paris, or was that something no, no. extraordinary? In, in Paris, it was. Uh, it came about when the Tunisian Jews and the Moroccan Jews and the Algerian Jews, after the Algerian War, started to emigrate to France. So then they started to see a kosher restaurant. However, thinking about it, there was some kosher restaurant rare in the Marais from the previous immigration of the Polish. Jews to France. Oh, of the Polish Jews. Correct. I would think this would have your restaurant would have been in the Marais because it's more of an Arab section, right? The Marais, no, it's not. Or it, I don't know if it is now. I wouldn't say so. It was a um, Le Marais was an old part of Paris, uh, inhabited with the Ashkenazi Jews. Oh, it was. Oh, it was yeah. like that. And now it's becoming very chic. It's yes. like full of uh, nice stores and clothing and. But the Ashkenazi Jewish. Jews. And Sephardic. Sephardic Jews. Yeah. You're Sephardic? They say everybody who is difference? not. Okay, so the <laughs> definition is whoever is not Ashkenazi is Sephardic. I see. So they put in the same bag the Jews from North Africa, <laughs> the Jews from Iran, the Jews ah. from the Middle East, the Jews from South America, and so on and so forth. So that those comes from. Those are not the, Ashkenazi. They are not Ashkenazi. But between the Jews from South America and the Jews from uh, North Africa, there's not too many, too much connection, really. But and, what and about the Persia? Even less. What about the food? The food is totally different. So. Yeah. The Ashkenazi food is reflect the countries and the culture and the geography mm -hmm. and the product you can find there, which are very simple, root vegetables, right. very little spice. Uh, a lot of fish, very little meat uh, for a long time, and recently meat came about. And why not spices? Because the spice would come from the Far East. And, and they were expensive. Go, they were very expensive, and they were, it was difficult to travel. They would come in the, on the back of camels on caravans, ah. and they would uh, originate either in North Africa or in oh. uh, India or in uh, further there and wouldn't reach Europe for long, for centuries. And so you, being in Tunis, had all those spices. Absolutely, plus the vegetables. We oh. were, you know. That's you, a you difference, have, right? That's a difference. You have cold climates and cold uh, uh, terroir, and uh, you have uh, the bounty of uh, North Africa, and the vegetable, everything you can, and the herbs and the fruits and everything. So the, the cuisine reflects that. I was in Tunis not long ago, hmm. but the Jewish community has just very small, tiny, 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 from tiny. huge group yeah. of people. Uh, I actually went to a, a, a kosher, I think a, a kosher, kosher restaurant. restaurant. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very few. I would say, thank God, there's still some that are still alive and not too much bothered because the situation is kind of very, you know, delicate. But it's yeah. beautiful there. It's so it's beautiful. beautiful. Tunisia. Tunisia used to be the, the grain house of Rome. Oh, interesting. So Tunisia and part of oh. Algeria and Libya were where Rome would grow its wheat and its olive oils and everything. Ah. So you have this presence. So you have Roman. that in your food. I mean, that's yeah, part yeah. of your the, food. The, the food is, uh, is really uh, uh, coming, descending from a, a mix of cultures and, uh, and uh, also the... the um, the, en the influence of uh, Hispanic culture. Of the Hispan the because the Arabic conquest went from North Africa to Spain, and then after they were uh, sent out from Spain, came back in two waves, one f after the expulsion from Spain, but also when the, the Jews from, uh, from Spain were expelled from Spain, and mm -hmm. they, they, they relocated in different cities, bringing their food technique oh. and ingredients with them. Same. So that's how it influences everything. Absolutely. So you left Paris, you came to Los Angeles, and Absolutely. you started Got Kosher. Not right what away. Kind of a, what kind of a title is that? <laughs> Not right away. It's very simple. We got uh, uh, Got Milk, you know. the Got Milk, oh, that's what pick. it is. <laughs> we found it was very cute and very cool at the time. It was several years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, Got Milk, Got Kosher, it just came naturally. So you started your restaurant. 
Um, did you work with Nancy Silverton first? Tell Before us a little bit. Before, I, I uh, managed La Brea Bakery, oh, the bakery itself on La Brea. Ah. Uh, met and uh, I really understood the power of gourmet sandwiches. And you brought a gourmet sandwich, but a kosher gourmet sandwich. A kosher, and also this one, the one that you pointed, the Tunisian sandwich, is a co it's a sandwich of my childhood. What is this, a potato? It's a, yeah, it's a oh. tuna sandwich with yeah. uh, a pepper and tomato relish on the bottom. Uh -huh. Tuna fish in olive oil, potato, oh. eggs, olives, uh, harissa, uh, oh, harissa, Israeli salad, peppers, all kind of thing. It's harissa, really, spicy. Harissa, spicy. Mix a blend of, of, of different peppers, dry peppers with garlic and salt. Fabulous. Fabulous. Everybody puts it on their everything, right? Exactly. They, they always put a thing on the uh, table. You can cook with it. You can uh, do sauce, omelette, uh, marinade, oh, right. uh, stews. I mean... Uh, you, you, in Tunisian cuisine is the quintessential That's element. it. You yeah. need that. Yeah. Okay. And the the other beef. one is a Memphis barbecue sauce, pulled beef, full brisket, uh, that I decided to make because a friend of mine really one day introduced me to the sandwich, and I fell in love with it. And we made a kosher version uh -huh. with the authentic Memphis barbecue sauce. Um, a delicious uh, uh, brisket be uh, pulled beef and a great coleslaw that we make in the house that, of course, doesn't have any dairy. Oh, I was just going to ask yeah. you because with kosher you can't mix dairy or absolutely. One of the primary meat, right? laws of kosher is you cannot mix dairy and meat. Okay, it's so dairy. it looks like it's dairy because but it's, it's coleslaw. Correct. And then, what about the meat? Does that have to be special? Absolutely. The kosher, this is the most important part. The, the kosher meat, the, 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 the most important part of it, it has to be uh, killed without any suffering to the animal. I see. Oh. And these, this is meat? These are meatballs, Tunisian fennel meatballs. Mm -hmm. And we do that as a little appetizer before a meal. And this? So this is uh, mm. uh, beets with, uh, <laughs> with mint. Delicious. It's, it's very good. And this yeah. is mint. Yeah, that goes together. And this one? And this is a, a sandwich mer a merguez. Merguez is the name of a beef sausage we make in Tunisia. And I put it into a challah roll, but not any challah roll. It's a pretzel challah roll. Oh, the challah roll. Challah. Yeah. Challah. <laughs> so you take the challah dough, which is the challah is the bread that we do for Shabbat, I traditionally. See. Uh -huh. And instead of doing a, uh, a challah uh, shape, I, we, make, we make rolls, you know, and uh, it's with arisa and a very simple uh, garnish of uh, onion and parsley. And the combination is terrific. It looks great. Mm. And, and everything tastes, I've been picking at it, so yeah. I know it all tastes delicious. Yeah. One thing that I wanted to ask you is uh, you do a catering as yeah, well. And absolutely. you did a, um, uh, a wedding. What kind of a wedding? Uh, Outside wedding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, what it's, was it? It's, it's uh, near the Yucca Desert. In the wild? Yeah, yeah. in the wild. Uh, people who are fanatic of camping and they wanted to invite, the, invite their guest uh, in the camp, uh, in, the, in the wild. So we had to bring everything and we had to present things that you don't, have to, you don't really need to reheat or, oh. or prepare, you know. Oh, so I it was... Simple food, tasty, and adapted to the terrain. Do they have a, a rabbi come out there too? Absolutely, <laughs> of course. You couldn't, you couldn't be the rabbi. You couldn't no. do the marriage. No, no, no. Well, w before we leave, just give me one typical Tunisian meal. What would I see on a table? Couscous. Ah, oh, I forgot to mention that. Couscous is a typical, again, quintessential Tunisian meal. It's a feast in itself. And it's, it's grain. It's grain. Just let me first say, it's what I ate every Friday night of my life. And it's what all Tunisian Jews eat every Friday night of their life. I love it. That's the tradition. <laughs> Couscous is the thing. And every family has its own recipes and ways of making it. And they transmit that from, from uh, family, from mother to daughter. And it's a big bowl of grain. Couscous is a semolina steamed with a lot of vegetables, different meats, and especially meatballs, bigger oh, than that, uh -huh. uh, double cooked, uh, wrapped into vegetable, potato, eggplant. Oh, so you uh, had your own way of doing it's, it. It's amazing. And, and, and this central plate 
is also accompanied with uh, several uh, tangy, spicy little salad to kind of uh, contra con contrast in taste. Do you serve you. that at your cafe? I make it on, on what request. Did? Oh, on, on Friday. Yeah, you have to order usually, it. Oh, you have to order it. Correct. Well, it on sounds Fridays, fabulous. Yeah. And I think you've brought a little touch of Tunisia. And I thank you so much, Alain. My pleasure. And thank you for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles. Keep writing to us uh, at 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90017. But email J A. Q-U-I-N-N-1 at AOL.com. See you next time.